Uh, lots to talk about, including an FA Cup uh, quarterfinal yesterday, which was particularly impressive, I thought, in terms of entertainment value, Martin. Uh, we are streaming, by the way, on YouTube and Facebook. If you want to watch the show, you can head over to the Talk Sport official channels on those platforms. A breathless football match, a breathless weekend in the FA Cup. Coventry and Wolves involved in a thrilling game. Mm. Their chairman, the Coventry chairman, apparently is going to spray paint his house sky blue as a result of that victory. Um, Chelsea earned a place at Wembley in another bonkers game. Um, and City swatted aside Newcastle. What captivated you the most over the weekend? And naturally, I think, um, well, take it in stages for a start. Coventry's amazing fight back uh, to score twice and add at times. Remarkable victory. And um, then I actually went to the game uh, yesterday to watch um, Leicester City play um, at Stamford Bridge, uh, courtesy of um, the secretary at uh, Leicester, got me a couple of tickets. And um, I really enjoyed the game. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, Leicester fighting back, obviously lost the game eventually. And then getting home to watch um, uh, Manchester United perform brilliantly against Liverpool. It was an outstanding weekend. Was it one of those weekends that the FA Cup sort of can deliver that no other tournament really can? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it depends where you, your position on the Premier League is and how much value you attach to that over above and everything else. But it produced a series of games which are symptomatic of the FA Cup at this stage. You know, we've seen in the past, we've seen teams like Wickham Wanderers do things in games. Um, and we've seen teams, you know, constantly produce memorable fixtures and memorable outcomes. And nothing was different this weekend. So the FA Cup to me is a very valuable proposition. Anyone that wants to devalue it is slightly simple, I think. <laughs> um, do you think Newcastle fans this morning will be sitting there scratching their heads a little bit, watching Coventry City and Leicester City give it a go against Premier League opposition, and maybe Newcastle not being able to land too many punches on Manchester City on Saturday evening? Um, yeah, well, I didn't I didn't see much of that game, I have to say. that. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. So I, I'm not uh, sure of the running order in that one. But um, Manchester, when you get to the quarter final and you know it's just it's going to be played, it's not as if there's uh, to say there's going to be a replay and you can get a team back to your ground. Then I think you really have to have a go. You must have a go. And uh, and if you tell me that uh, Newcastle didn't, then that's really disappointing. Um, let's talk about. They couldn't get the ball. They couldn't get the ball. I mean, if you look at the commentary that Danny Murphy was saying during the course of the game about they've got to get closer, they've got to press higher, they've got to work harder than we're doing. Then Adam Shew at half time is going, yeah, in principle, that's that's what we've got to do, mm -hmm. but we can't get the ball off Man City. Was we can't that? do this. We can't create any pressure. Sure, because... Pierce's problem with it was, and he was on uh, TalkSport on Saturday night, he was saying that, it, that when Newcastle at their best, they're much more aggressive. They're much more intense they do yeah. get closer to opponents and they respect, weren't being able to do that with respect to Stuart he said that Newcastle are going to win the league this year he did so you know you have to take both, <laughs> each other, one, one of those <laughs> did he? Yeah, he did yeah he did, did. Right, okay. but I think you. I mean I think you have to look at the the omnipotence of the performance of Manchester City rather than perhaps the passive aggressive or the missing aggression that Newcastle weren't able to manifest in themselves they're not the same side that they were at the beginning of the season they're not playing with the same momentum the same belief they're not playing with the same forthrightness and that might be a combination of the the toll of the season um, or just the levelling out of where they are at this moment in time. Uh, no doubt the game of the weekend and the talking points of the weekend came from Manchester United's victory over Liverpool in stoppage time at the end of extra time. Um, do you think this could be a, a turning point for Eric Ten Hag, who was clearly under pressure? Lots of people suggesting uh, that he needed a big result and a big showing against the Liverpool in order to sort of impress his new masters. Well, if he did need it, he got it. It was a fantastic effort. Really, really fantastic. You, you're in the quarter final. you're up against, you know what you would consider your, you've been your biggest opponents for quite some considerable years, really, the, the um, animosity between uh, Liverpool and Manchester United goes uh, very deep. And um, and just, you know, to fight back in the manner in which they did, um, having players all over the place, it was, Simon mentioned, a, a, a memorable cup tie. It was really, really great. But to win it in the manner in which they did and to have the crowd absolutely razz for this game and, and to see those scenes at the end... Yeah, well, if that's if 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 indeed that was needed, then he got it. The sight of Bruno Fernandes limping, playing centre back, Anthony mm. playing left back, um, probably when you first glanced at it, a little bit disconcerting going into extra time. Only two uh, defenders on the pitch, but how much credit 
uh, does Eric Ten Hag deserve for throwing caution to the wind and just going for it, gambling with everything? You have to, yeah, exactly. You're only going to get the one chance. And it doesn't really matter where... The, you talk about tactics. The tactics disappeared long time into that game, so it didn't really matter. It was it was cut and thrust. It was whoever was losing the ball, the next team were coming and counter-attacking. Then that was broken up coming back again so really it, it didn't really matter who was playing in what position at the end of it it was a matter of trying to get the result and they got it was it bold was it brave or was it desperate um I, probably a combination of all of the above i mean ultimately you know i watched the game in its entirety i watched liverpool take control of the game and mm. thought that they would decimate united because united were so easy to play i thought united were brilliant for the first 25 minutes mm. And if they can play like that for significant proportions of games, then they'll win more than they lose. Do you, to characterise your question, do I think it's a salvation of Ten Hag in that moment? If you're if you're micromanaging situations, yeah, maybe. If you're going to macromanage it, yes, they'll beat Coventry in the Cup semi-final with due respect. And I, the moment they beat Liverpool, I, I sat there going, I bet they draw Coventry. I bet mm. they draw Coventry. But they'll get they'll get ripped to pieces by Man City if they play Man City in the Cup final because Man City are a far better side. I was surprised at Liverpool. You have to give credit to United because... They had the fortitude to get themselves back into the game. But there were passages of time in that game where I thought Liverpool um, let United off the hook a little bit. Failed to kill them off. They're mm. usually killers in yeah. those circumstances, aren't they? And they make two errors. You know, United creating pressure on them, but not, you know, both of the two goals that got United back into it and winning the game were created by Liverpool errors. You know, Darwin Nunes um, and Harvey Elliott. And you look at that game, and I don't want to take anything away from Ten Hag and United because what you saw was application. Yeah. What you saw was playing for Man United in a way that you'd expect Man United players to play for their side. Yeah, that, but that's all part of the game, Sam. You know, uh, you know, people, uh, moves breaking down suddenly and you can trace things back, you know, to, to what happened maybe about 30 seconds earlier. But that's all part of it. That, that has always been the game. Um, you're dead right Nunes has played a, a ball that he, he probably shouldn't, he shouldn't have done yes it is Yeah, shocker but it happens ball. it happens in the game and in those moments I think even Klopp mentioned it well, when when you're towards the end when your thinking's not clear at the end of it it, 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 it can drive a manager crazy obviously and it can affect the game a big time it obviously affects the results but eventually you know you can boil it down it's the number of chances that you create and the number of chances you score from those creations and, and it's obviously defending at the other end if you can defend. It's just a brilliant, brilliant game. And, and you know, just on a, on, a, on a wider point, really, bringing back what Simon mentioned about the FA Cup, which has lost its luster over the years. And it, and it is really terrible because, strangely enough, I don't want to go back to talking about my day, but when I grew up, winning the FA Cup and being uh, the, wanting to p participate, probably because it was the only live game on TV as I was growing up, but it was everything. You'd rather have won the FA Cup than win the league. You know, I think everybody who, from way back from Stanley Matthews days in 1953, right through to, uh, to winning, would have remembered who won the FA Cup. Mm -hmm. Might not remember who won the league that particular year, but it was really f fantastic. And then, you know... Wembley then taking place, uh, having semi-finals being played there when you put an active fight. I, I, why it was probably for finance or something like this year. I, you wanted but that's to been play, going, but that's been going in fairness. That's been going for thirty I'm, odd years now. Gascoigne scores a goal against Arsenal in a, in a cup semi-final. Absolutely, but Wembley. I'm saying so, and it has yeah. lost it from that length of time. And now the, the replay has been done away with as well too. So but I mean, it, it, the more it, people keep saying it's lost its luster the more it'll eventually lose its luster. People, all the big sides are in the FA Cup. They all want to win it. The broadcasters has been in six semi-finals in a row. The broadcasters want to broadcast it. The only thing that, that makes it well, slightly diminished is the fact that the Premier League is so all-consuming. I think there's still immense value in it. And I think it's certain sections of the media that keep running this story about the FA Cup, keep mm. running the story that it's been diminished. OK, you don't get a lot of money for winning the FA Cup, but it's still a remarkable amount of associated it's, it's, benefit. It's not even the money, but it's the replays. I remember... I, I, and I know that the fixture list is now it's so so crowded that it, that uh, you're you're having to look at, at at situations. But I'm talking about I'm talking about replays that were taking place where where was it uh, Liverpool had about four I think against Arsenal one year, mm -hmm. three against and, Luton one year eighty seven. Uh, those things and th that's all disappeared. So it's going to be on the day. So you can't get a team if you're in the quarter final of the FA Cup, and you think to yourself that you're away from home. Just try and get that side back again because you could maybe be in the semi-final. Listen, okay, listen. 
my ran- romanticism has disappeared completely. <laughs> uh, I just wonder what Manchester United fans think about the the weekend. What happens to Eric Ten Hag now? He's not really one to open up. He doesn't really get too uh, emotional. But uh, I think he, he was a little bit annoyed about the characterisation of the team after the Manchester City game, um, saying that they were too negative. He was pointing to the fact that they've had a lot of injuries. He actually said uh, recently if they'd had all of their players available, his win rate would be over 75%, which uh, raised a few eyebrows. Um, Do you think that he's given a rough ride? Should he stay? Did he show yesterday that he's got the cojones to be able to turn big matches? Because they certainly did yesterday. 03717, double two, double three, a double four. And how much did the brutal schedule have something to do with Liverpool's performance? It was their 18th game of 2024, Manchester United's 12th. It was also Liverpool's fifth game in 16 days, Martin, how difficult is that to that, go through? That is difficult regardless of what squad you have. That is really difficult, I must admit. And every single game that they are playing is a big, big match. There's no such thing as a small game for Liverpool. And they were going for everything, obviously, because the manager's leaving. has um, given an added incentive to everybody uh, that's involved with Liverpool. So that'll be a massive disappointment for them to, to lose the game. But it is, it's a big, it's a really heavy schedule. You just mentioned there, that's their 18th game since the start of January. It's remarkable. Uh, guys, have waited all night for this great show. The man with the suit that doesn't fit is at it again. Massive win for Manchester United and Ten Hag's kids from Ryan making fence panels in Altrincham. What a tragedy that you've reached the point that you win an FA Cup quarterfinal. <laughs> you're, you're, you're stinking the place out in the league. You're the biggest spenders in world football. And your moment is to beat Man United in an FA Cup quarterfinal. Liverpool. Fantastic. His suit fits in much better as a result of that. I thought, absolutely his, right. I thought his suit looked quite well tailored yesterday, Burberry, to be fair. Burberry suit, I think, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, three, seven, one, seven, double, two, double, three, and double, four. Simon Jordan is here. So is Martin O'Neill. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.